Hello and welcome to CNET. I'm Haley Kynes and today we're profiling the race for Belfont Area School Board Directors. With me now is Republican candidate Jennifer Barnhart. Welcome Jennifer. Thank you for having me. To get started, do you just want to tell me a little bit about yourself and why you're running for the Belfont School Board? Absolutely. So um, I think first and foremost, the one thing that I really want to put out there is, you know, I'm a parent and I'm a parent of two wonderful children. I'm really proud of them. They've gone through the Belfont School District from kindergarten um, all the way to my oldest is now a senior. Um, but I also feel like I'm a community parent in, in ways. I have taken on, I, I love seeing these children that my are peers of my, my kids um, and other kids throughout different volunteering, whether it be Little League or other things that I've been a part of. Um, it's been fantastic to watch them grow and just find themselves in their own place. So um, that's kind of led me down the road trying to, to just really make an impact in life. That's, that's overall my goal, um, send the ripples through the water. And you know, though that need for impact has led me down this path. So hopefully, you know, I'll continue to make the ripples bigger and bigger and leave a pretty healthy legacy behind. The district is in the process of planning for a new elementary school. Um, what would be your priorities for the project and what would you bring to the process as a school board member? So I think one of the things that I really bring to the table for this is you know, looking at how it's going to be used, trying to look at outside perspectives outside of the actual brick and mortar, um, which I will be the first to acknowledge is not my, my specialty or skill of mine. So those are things that I don't understand, but I'm very fortunate that I'm working with people who are also running for the school board that do have that skill that I can rely on and trust. Um, to make those decisions, but it's it's really looking at, you know, do we have a space for this to occur, whether it be extracurriculars, how do we keep these kids safe? Um, are there things that we're looking at other opportunities? You know, are there classrooms that are have multi-purposes to them so that as situations change, there there is that adaptability. Are they meeting the teacher's needs and style of teaching? or the, the student style of learning. Um, so that's really what I think I bring to the table for this new school structure. How do charter schools affect the Belfont Area School District and what, if any, reform do you think is needed? So I think charter schools have definitely had the largest impact financially on public schools. And I think this is something that I'm still trying to take a lot of this in and really understand um, you know, I think for every child and every family, it's important to have options, but those options should not detract from the other options that are available and from those that are going to public school or don't have other opportunities to look at something other than the public school system. And I think that's where the concern has to lie is what meets all the needs without detracting from anybody else. Is there anything you'd like to see implemented to attract and retain high quality teachers or substitutes within the Belfont Area School District? Absolutely. I think, you know, it's a trickle down. You know, when you have good management, um, you, you create a system where people don't want to leave it, you know, and it's, it's looking at the policies that we have in place and creating an environment where teachers can teach and children love learning with them and I think that absolutely can exist but you need the right um, starting you know from the top with the superintendent the school board through all the administrators through the teachers the teachers got to have to know that they're valued and that they're worthwhile and for those that that might be straying you know constructive criticism is a lost art sometimes that we all feel very attacked and that's not necessarily always going to be the case it's it's about growing and you know we're all learners through life and I think the elementary school is where it starts but it keeps going and we have to be willing to realize that we have to learn new ways and and allow those new ways to have good plans in place, not just ideas, but actually implementing those ideas and letting them grow their own legs. 
Are there any additional programs or initiatives that you would like to see the district implement in the areas of diversity, equity, inclusivity, and belonging? So absolutely, I think there are definitely areas, once again, for growth in this. Um, but I am a firm believer with under the right conditions that grows on its own. You think of, you know, a weed, it, it finds its place to grow, a dandelion. You know, it's in the middle of a so concrete sidewalk and it's finding its way. So I think if we create the right environments where we can flourish a beautiful garden and plant those seeds, um, they're going to find ways of happening. So sometimes we try to force it too much and it has the ability to counter be counterproductive so I don't like to necessarily force but I think it's looking at you know where do we where do we have needs and is, is there ways that or stuff that we're not doing to look at fulfilling those needs and I think that that definitely has to be looked at in the hiring process in the implementation of how we're working through things um, but I think it'll grow on its own in a very healthy manner to what extent do you think parents or guardians should be involved in the school curriculum or the materials? And do you think parents should have more input on the district curriculum? So I think parents and guardians need to be very aware and have a transparency to what their children are learning. But I am not a teacher, and therefore I, that's not my skill, that's not my specialty. Um, I would not want someone coming into my workplace and telling me ways to do my job better when they have no um, expertise or experiences with that. You know, I'll go back to, you know, the brick and mortar. I am very okay with saying that I probably should not be building a highway system for the safety of all the others around. So do I want to know about how those processes are? Are you doing things that are safe? Um, so I think it's the same kind of mindset. Like, let me know what you're thinking. Have, let me have input into saying, have you taken this into account? And going back to your previous question, I think that's, that's are, those are the areas where the diversity, the inclusiveness, they're gonna come about naturally by allowing that open communication and transparency. Sort of on that same topic, um, book banning in public schools has been discussed a lot lately, both locally and nationally. What is your position on having books removed from public school libraries as a result of a parental concern? I think it really needs to be evaluated. Um, I think the books need to be thought about in ways of um, how are they developmentally ready for that child? And are there books in there that really should not be available in a public school? Um, I also, you know, we learn from books, we learn from other people's experiences. So I think it's a very, I don't want to say one way or another because I think it's definitely, you know, per, per book, per page of each book, per chapter, however you wanna break it down. Um, there's a lot of situational things that I think need to be taken into account when making those decisions. And I think it is up to the school to keep all students safe. Um, and in their development responsible way. So, you know, I think there is times and places, but there's, we've gotta be very aware of, learning happens in the most chaotic of situations. So how do we balance both of those? As a school board member, um, how would you ensure transparency in the board's decision-making and communication with um, the public about decisions? Um, so one of the things that I will tell you during this whole process for me and running for the school board position um, has really been, you know, educating. Um, there's just stuff that I have learned about what decisions are being made because um, ownership on me for not knowing better to go seek out those answers, to not look at um, school board minutes, to see what's on the agenda, to, to find out the different ways. Now I do think there are ways that the school and the school board can make things a little bit more transparent. Um, there are definitely times that confidentiality has to occur and I think everyone not only should um, respect that but embrace that in the fact that if it were you 
you know, you wouldn't want your dirty laundry aired out there too. So I think there's a time and place for all of that as well. Belfont superintendent recently announced that she is leaving at the end of the school year. Um, if elected as a board member, what would you look for as the district undergoes a search for a new superintendent and what would you like to see in the next superintendent? So I would like to see good, good bleh, excuse me, good leadership um, in from that superintendent. And I would like to see new ideas, things that are, you know, the superintendent should be almost like the parenting source. Um, how are you empowering your administration to empower your teachers, to empower your students to grow and learn more? And how are we getting creative? The superintendent should be have a handle um, on the pieces of what's going on and how we fit, whether it be different state or federal laws, but how do we implement them so that they meet our students and our teachers to teach those students? Mm -hmm. So I think really that person has to, to be willing to really look at things with a new innovative eye and have a trusting relationship with all of those that they're overseeing that they can really make a difference here. And I think Belfont's a wonderful place. I'll, you know, I, I am not an alum. I am not originally from this area. I chose this. I chose this for my family. I chose this for my, my children. Um, and I love it and you know it's led me to here and I will fight because I think you know we're we're not all perfect but there are a lot of good things going on and that's that's why I chose this area and this school district so how do we continue to grow and change with the times so that we continue to be successful um, we have about a minute left but is there anything else that you would like to share with the voters Absolutely. Um, so as I've mentioned, you know, not, not from around here, um, I do feel like I've encompassed Belfont pride and I want to be a part of continuing what is the pride here in Belfont. And, you know, this road has led me down through all my experiences. Um, I've had a lot of skills that I've learned, life lessons that I've learned that I feel I bring to this table and hopefully I, you know, I can continue to see them through and this is my impact moving forward. But what I would like to say is, you know, I'm calling on everyone to make your impact by getting out and voting, um, making that difference and hopefully we can together make the changes that we're looking to make. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. We've been talking with Jennifer Barnhart, a Republican candidate for the Belfont Area School Board. All candidates for the Belfont School Board race have been invited to participate in a CNET interview. Election day is Tuesday, November 7th. For more information about voting in Center County, please visit centercountyvotes.gov. I'm Haley Kynes. Thanks for watching and please get out and vote. Hello and welcome to CNET. I'm Healy Kynes and today we're profiling the race for Belfont Area Board of School Directors. With me now is Republican candidate Patrick Buck. Welcome Patrick. Thanks for having me. To get started, do you just want to tell me a little bit about yourself and why you're running for Belfont School Board? Yep, um, so I moved to Belfont a couple years ago, uh, father of two. Uh, we really were interested in Belfont for a number of reasons. We really like the community, the people, and certainly the school district. Um, yeah, I'm not a politician. I mean, <laughs> it's the part that probably, you know, I could do without, but ultimately we kind of have to do it right. Um, but yeah, I, I, I want to make sure that the community's voice is heard, uh, represent the community, represent myself, um, be able to have a say in, in the things that are going on in the district. And I mean, ultimately, ultimately it's for my kids, right? So. Um, this is kind of taking some of my time away from my family, but I feel like it's a good investment of my time and that we'll kind of get it in the back end, right? It'll, it'll you know, provide a good, a good opportunity for me to make a difference. Uh, the Belfont School District is in the process of planning for a new elementary school. What would be your priorities for the project and what would you bring to the process as a school board member? 
Oh, I mean, so first and foremost, right, everybody's really going to be concerned about the budget, right? So um, the intent here is to, to build a, a new school and that we're going to be on a specific budget and minimize the impact to taxes, if not, you know, avoid a, a tax increase. So that's certainly critical to, you know, keep everybody uh, happy within the district. Um, but, you know, when you're, you're taking on a project like this, it's, it's important to kind of keep the future in mind, right? You know, future-proof the school, if you will. Um, we want to make sure that it's relevant and that it's up to date for years and years to come. Um, make sure it's flexible, again, so that you kind of, you know, you can change things around as the, as the district's needs change, as, as this technology changes. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you want to make sure that it, it's an efficient building too, right? So when you start talking about, you know, operating costs and things of that nature, you really take into account you know, if, is this system a little more expensive up front, but we're going to save it in three to five years? And it seems like a no-brainer, right? So you kind of want to have a lot, a lot of a, a long-term, long-term, you know, goals in mind when you're looking at doing that. Um, yeah, and uh, it, STEM STEM items are you know really important to me. Um, so making sure that we've got the technology and and the learning rooms in place to be able to kind of leverage those, I think that'll really help long-term. Um, you know, with preparing the students for opportunities, you know, as they graduate and really, you know, build on the, the community and, and, you know, the opportunities around us. How do charter schools affect the Belfont School District and what, if any, reform do you think is needed? You know, so charter schools are kind of a, they're a double-sided coin, right? Um, on, on one side of the coin, it, it provides, you know, local families with, you know, alternatives. Um, <clears throat> I think in some respects they're, they're a benefit in that it, you know, kind of keeps everybody in line. Um, there's, you know, a little bit of a competitive thing going on, right? Um, you know, so there's some good things with charter school. I, I do believe that. Um, on the same token, right, uh, charter schools are very expensive for the district. Um, so, you know, we have to allocate a lot of funding, you know. Um, you know, provide transportation to students that go to charter schools. So it's a challenge for the district. Um, I think the most important thing here is to understand why families, you know, feel the need to send their kids to charter school. Um, is it an education need? Um, you know, is the charter school providing something that the district isn't today? Um, is, you know, is it, uh, you know, a lot of times childcare can become a challenge too, right? You know, I know, you know, you got to get to, you, you got to kind of come up with you know, stop gaps in the morning and then after school. So what can the district do to kind of transition and provide those same opportunities to the families that are going and taking their uh, children to charter school? I think that's kind of step one, right? Understand the problem and then we can develop a solution. Is there anything you'd like to see implemented to attract and retain high quality teachers or substitutes within the Belfont School District? Yeah, I mean, I th ultimately, it's it, it goes along with you know the new building and you know providing the teachers with the tools they need to succeed, um, the flexibility. You don't want to necessarily hold everybody to a strict you know guidelines and rubric, but having said that, you know we do have needs that we need to achieve. You know, standardized testing is kind of one of those things. Um, but yeah, I think it, ultimately it's just providing them you know with the, with the right opportunities. Um, areas to grow and and yeah you, you don't if you see that one district kind of has all these things that you can leverage and you feel like you're you don't have the tools to succeed then you're probably going to be attracted somewhere else um, yeah I, I'm, I'm a manager in my profession right so it's really you know about providing them with what they need to succeed and eliminating the roadblocks to get that success are there any additional programs or initiatives that you would like to see the district implement in the areas of diversity, equity, inclusivity, and belonging? You know, so ultimately what I would like to see, I mean, we, we need to provide students that have specific needs, you know, with, with, with the opportunities, you know, to be successful. Having said that, I don't want to necessarily hold back other students and limit their abilities to grow either. Um, so it's you kind of have to thread the needle a little bit, right? You don't, you want to give them their opportunities, but you don't want to hold back a larger majority by doing those things too. So 
I mean, equity and inequality, you can kind of get into the specifics of what that definition means. I mean, ultimately, I want everybody to have the same opportunities. The outcomes are going to be driven by their desires, you know, and motivations to be successful and to go down a certain path. And, and where they end up is largely going to fall upon, you know, what, what they do and what they put into, um, you know, their education. So it's, again, it, you're kind of looking at both sides of the coin there. To what extent do you think parents or guardians should be involved in the school curriculum or materials? And do you think parents should have more input on the district curriculum? Yeah, 100%, right? So I would love to see more interaction with the parents in the school district. Um, I mean, that was one of the things that kind of motivated me to be sitting here today. Um, the parents ultimately you know it's it's their child right it's not it's not the school's child i know that there's a lot of ongoing dialogue there they know what's best for their child um, we all need to kind of work together to provide that child with what they need to be successful um, but yeah the, the the parents in the community their input is vital in this process um, i think that the school is obligated to provide them you know with more material on what their kids are being taught, what they're being exposed to. Um, you know, there's, you can, they can get it if they dig, um, but I think we need to be upfront and honest about it. Anything that we identify that could be controversial, right or wrong, right? And when I say controversial, I really mean that, you know, in the landscape of today's world, we kind of know what the hot topics are, right? So. Um, you know, if one side is going to be offended or believes it's controversial, then let's put it out in the open and, and vice versa, right? So, so everybody has an opportunity to be exposed and understand what's going on in the schools. It shouldn't be this game of, you know, if my kid's learning from home that I have to sit there over their shoulder and, and really identify that. So everybody's involvement is important. Um, and again, this is their children and their families. So they ultimately have a say in what should and shouldn't happen. The topic of book banning in public schools has been discussed lately, both locally and nationally. What is your position on having books removed from public school libraries as a result of a parental concern? I mean, some of the stuff that they're putting in schools is outright atrocious. Um, these kids really don't need to be exposed to that type of thing. The sexuality stuff, right? That's that has no place in the school. And quite frankly, it goes against the things that this country was built upon. I mean, we're one nation under God, right? So um, we are, we are, we are, were at least a Christian culture. Um, those things are critical in what's made us who we are today. And to go down the paths that they're going with some of this really, you know, just raunchy and atrocious stuff, there's no reason that kids need to be exposed to that. I mean, other than, you know, basic, health and, and stuff 101 sure are okay anatomy right but the the stuff that's been coming up you know in in the media lately it's it's awful and again that's one of those two as far as i'm concerned we need to be out in the open and upfront and honest about what's in those libraries and what these kids are exposed to i can tell you right now if my kid brought a book home like some of the stuff that i've seen it, 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 wouldn't, it wouldn't be pretty. I, I would be absolutely appalled, and I would expect the district to be held accountable for that. Um, and again, I don't think it should end up in my kids' hands in the first place. So that should have been, it should have been vetted out much, much before that, you know, a, a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old, a 15-year-old brings that type of stuff home. Belfont superintendent recently announced that she is leaving at the end of the school year. If elected to the board, what would you look for as the district undergoes a search for a new superintendent? And what do you want to see in the next superintendent? Uh, so a couple things, right? So we kind of touched on it earlier, right? So first and foremost, right? Like we need to bring somebody in who's going to lead the school that shares the kind of same and moral fi same moral fiber that we have. Um, you know, and, and, and the base that, you know, we, we lean on um, to ensure that the kids are brought up correctly, um, you know, that they're respectful, um, and that, you know, we ultimately keep some of that garbage out of the schools that we've seen. It's, 
The schools are a place for education. They're not a place for indoctrination. Um, and, you know, somebody who has experience would be great, right? I, I, ultimately, that person is going to be making very significant decisions on what takes place in the district. Um, I would say that in one area that Belfont really needs to kind of reflect on and take a look at is some of our academic performance, right? I, um, within the last 10 to 15 years, it, it hasn't really been great. It's either stagnated um, and then leading up to COVID, and then after COVID, it kind of took another step back. So what are we going to do to correct that trend? Right? I think it's very important. We need to identify metrics that we can lean on to understand if we are improving and focus on the areas we need to to improve. And when we start looking at those metrics, we need to be a little bit more specific, right? We can't just say, oh, it's mathematics, oh, it's, you know, it's language. Dig down deeper into it and understand a, a more focused area. What can we do to start fixing those problems? And those are the things that I think the superintendent is going to be critical in. Um, leaning on those metrics, I'm very data-driven. It's what I do in my day-to-day. -day. So the data is going to tell me what the data is going to tell me. I don't you know, I'm not going to go on, you know, somebody feels that this might be doing, you know, something in a positive way or whatever. It's, what does the data tell me? Did it make an improvement? And truthfully, sometimes it doesn't, but at least we know that, hey, you know, this didn't work. Let's change our approach and let's focus on something different. So, again, all of those things are critical. Um, the new superintendent in a perfect world would kind of have experience in those areas. And, and again, ultimately, they're a reflection of the community, too. So. I want everybody to be aligned in what, you know, what their moral makeup is. I think it's important. Um, we are just about out of time, but is there anything else that you would like to share with the voters? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, as, as I told you, I'm not really a politician. I'm, I'm here to really support the kids. Um, ultimately, it's, it's about making sure that their education is, you know, kept at the forefront, um, that they're safe while they're doing that, and that, you know, we use data to drive our decision making. Um, running with Win for Belfont, we've got four very good candidates. We are bipartisan. We are truly bipartisan, so it's not something that we just speak. It's what we practice. We've got candidates that are registered on both, you know, both sides. Um, we work very well together, and we pledge to do the same you know, on the board. Um, and then some of the folks that we're running against, we do not have any ties to teachers in the district, which I think is important and that we don't have a conflict of interest. So when you go out in November, please uh, consider us. It's uh, ballot numbers 6, 7, 8, and 10. Um, Kessling, Weaver, Buck, and Barnhart. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much. We've been talking with Patrick Buck, a Republican candidate for the Belfont Area School Board. All candidates for the Belfont School Board race have been invited to participate in a CNET interview. Election Day is Tuesday, November 7th. For more information about voting in Center County, please visit centercountyvotes.gov. I'm Haley Kynes. Thanks for watching, and please get out and vote. Hello and welcome to CNET. I'm Haley Kynes and today we're profiling the race for the Belfont Area Board of School Directors. With me now is Democrat candidate Paul Dombrowski. Welcome, Paul. Hi. Uh, so to get started, do you just want to tell me a little bit about yourself and why you're running for the Belfont School Board? About myself, I'm a um, emeritus professor of English, uh, retired a couple years ago and relocated to Belfont with my wife, um, who's also a Pennsylvanian, and we met at graduate school at Penn State, actually. Um, I bring a lot of um, experience in uh, education uh, and even more experience in service with military service, federal civil service, and 30 years of teaching experience. Um, among my master's degrees is a, uh, one in counseling and a bachelor's in mathematics. So I have a, a broad um, understanding of um, education. 
Um, I'm, I'm running because I want to serve. I've served, served, served. Uh, military service, federal civil service, uh, uh, public uh, higher education. Um, I, I feel an obligation to my community uh, and the people who are growing up in that community. Community not in the sense of uh, Belfont per se or Center County, but the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the whole United States and actually the United States situation, situated in the whole world uh, uh, community. And I, I'm a firm believer in the uh, community of humankind, of all of uh, Homo sapiens as one great big family of relatives who don't always live together nicely, but uh, it's important to work toward doing that from a sense of fairness, equality, and respect for law. Uh, Thank you. Um, so the Belfont School District is in the process of planning for a new elementary school. Um, what would you be your priorities for the project and what would you bring to the process as a school board member? Well, I've attended um, all the school board meetings since, um, since I threw my hat in the ring. Um, it's, it's pretty much decided uh, what, what it's going to uh, look like in um, broad terms. Uh, in narrow terms, I think it's important to have some uh, common meeting uh, areas um, that don't exist in the current situation. Uh, it's important that um, adjustments be made for uh, population changes in the Delfont area um, as they're expected over the years. Um, as far as the building itself, uh, I'm working at a disadvantage with respect to some of my other uh, candidates who are already incumbent school board member, members who are aware of what is uh, discussed within non-public uh, executive meetings. So I'm uh, working only with public information and it seems like uh, it's a great school and it's, it's on course to uh, be done very well. How do charter schools affect the Belfont Area School District and what, if any, reform do you think is needed? Charter, uh, the term charter school is, um, has a lot of different meanings and connotations depending on who's using the term and for what purposes. Uh, in general, um, I am not supportive of uh, charter schools uh, because I'm a firm believer in public education. Uh, public education is an education for what America is all about. Equality, fairness, rule of law, the power of the vote, that's vitally important and that is what the uh, public schools are intended to teach, and they do teach it, and they do it very well. A sense of uh, civic responsibility, uh, uh, responsibility to others, uh, kindness and consideration to others. Public schools are terrifically important. They are fundamental to what America is meant to be, according to our Constitution. And I think uh, charter schools are there are many sorts of flavors of charter schools, and some, some are not particularly objectionable to me, but uh, in general, the impulse is to move away from public schools, and the purpose, the motivation behind that is to get away from a sense of equality and fairness and inclusiveness for people who are different, and I am very much opposed to that. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Is there anything you'd like to see implemented to attract and retain high quality teachers or substitutes within the Belfont Area School District? Well, there's a hell of a lot of things that I'd like to see happen. 
uh, but almost all of that has to do with money. Um, you cannot have uh, attract the very best teachers uh, unless you offer a uh, competitive salary and competitive ben benefits and uh, some assurance that they're working within a school district which will treat them fairly and honorably and recognize their professional abilities and reward them as, uh, as appropriate. Uh, as most people know, uh, the, the school funding uh, matter is under, uh, it's in a state of flux at the state level. And I think it's, that was a long time coming, it's long overdue, and uh, we deserve our fair share of state monies based on equitable treatment of our students, and that can't happen without equitable treatment of our teachers and staff. Are there any additional programs or initiatives that you'd like to see the district implement in the areas of diversity, equity, inclusivity, and belonging? Well, as far as DEIB, um, I believe the best approach is to um, research best practices throughout the state and throughout the nation and implement those. And a lot of that is going to be on contingent on uh, funds from the state and the federal government. But more importantly, it's contingent on the moral will of the school district to make things happen, not to just sign off on, on some uh, legislated requirement as a checkbox, but actually uh, implement a spirit of uh, inclusivity and empowerment embrace diversity and do everything you can to avoid having students come into class and feel that they are not accepted, that they're ridiculed, humiliated, um, excluded. Um, I think it's a moral responsibility of the public schools to do that and it's one of those things that isn't readily measured on a data set but I think it's uh, one of the most important responsibilities of public school education. To what extent should parents or guardians be involved in school curriculum or the materials? And should parents have more input on the district curric curriculum? I think, uh, uh, I think parents already have a say before the board to bring up their concerns. But the concern of one parent or two parents is not the concerns of the entire school district uh, parentage. Um, I think it's important that uh, individual or group voices be heard and respected, but that should not be driving what the school board decides and certainly not deciding what our teaching professionals our highly educated, respected teaching professionals have decided what is important for our teachers to be learned, uh, both at the, at the uh, individual uh, teacher level, but also at the state level. Uh, no, uh, individual parents uh, should not be determining uh, in, on an individual basis uh, what sort of books are available to our students. It's, it's, a, it's a shame to restrict the um, learning prospects of our students, especially if we're intending to grow them up into independent, uh, socially responsible adults, independent uh, from what their parents or uh, um, political affiliations seem to uh, tell them what they want, should want to do. They should be freestanding adults, and it's uh, uh, incumbent on our teachers to cultivate that sense of independence and free thinking, autonomous thinking, and social responsibility. And you can't do that if you're putting blinders on them. On that same topic, uh, book banning in public schools has been discussed lately, both locally and nationally. 
Um, what is your position on having books removed from public school libraries as a result of parental concerns? You use that term parental concerns again, and um, that's, that can be taken several ways, as though there's a mass of, like the majority of all the students in the school district decide something should be banned. But that's not really the reality of what goes on. The reality of what goes on is individual parents and politically motive, motivated groups are grandstanding before our school boards insisting that certain things be excluded and banned. And I think that is a damn shame, actually. Um, the, um, that's the tail wagging the dog. Um, as far as parent responsibility is concerned, um, I see education as working hand in glove uh, with uh, the cultivation of their students and children into responsible uh, adults. And the two um, groups, education and parenting, should be, wor should be working together, but it's sometimes they're uh, not entirely in sync. But I'm a firm believer in the separateness of the two. Uh, what goes on in the home or what goes on in the church is one thing. What goes on in the public schools is the cultivation of students to be responsible, sensitive, caring citizens of the Commonwealth and the nation that uh, uh, embrace um, equality, uh, individuality, rule of law, the fullness of the rule of law, uh, and, fund and cornerstone of that is equality of all people, whether they happen to be disabled or not, or whether they have, have to have particular sexual orientations or inclinations. Um, the pursuit of happiness is one of the cornerstones of our nation. And I'd like to see that cornerstone respected and built upon. Um, we are just about out of time here, but is there anything else that you would like to share with the voters? Well, a lot, also along the lines of DEIB, um, I think it's um, um, the move away from, there seems to be a fear of public schools, and I think that's uh, ridiculous because public schools are the cornerstone of America. They teach what it is to be American. Equal, equality, independence, rule of law, the power of the vote, all these are cultivated within our schools, aside from the content areas of reading, writing, and arithmetic. This enculturation into what it is to be in America is what um, I think uh, the most important part of our public education. And that is the part that is being slighted by cyber schools and charter schools in general. In general, I'm not saying there aren't exceptions, but in general, I believe that to be true. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We've been talking with Paul Dombrowski, Democrat candidate for the Belfont Area School Board. All candidates for the Belfont School Board race have been invited to participate in a CNET interview. Election day is Tuesday, November 7th. For more information about voting in Center County, please visit centercountyvotes.gov. I'm Haley Kynes. Thanks for watching, and please get out and vote. Hello and welcome to CNET. I'm Haley Kynes and today we're profiling the race for Belfont Area School District Board of Directors. With me now is Democrat Julie Fitzgerald. Welcome, Julie. Thank you, Haley. 
To get started, do you want to tell me a little bit about yourself and why you're running for the Belfont School Board? Sure. I am a longtime Belfont resident. I've lived in Belfont um, over 20 years now. Both my children have gone through the Belfont School District. Uh, and I'm just very committed to education in general and our Belfont community. Uh, I currently work in higher education at Penn State uh, in our world campus, and um, I am really just interested in ser continuing to serve because I think it's an important role uh, as citizens. You know, we have an obligation to make sure that uh, our children have the best education possible. They are our future. And um, I would really en enjoy and, and appreciate the opportunity to continue to serve uh, our community in this role. The district is in the process of planning for a new elementary school. Yep. Um, what would be your priorities for the project or what are your priorities for the project and what would you bring to the process as a school board member? Sure, um, I think that a priority, a couple priorities. Number one is um, getting, the project, getting the project done right um, which we've done a lot of work up until this time to make sure that um, the building that we're building, the size that we're building, uh, meets the needs of our current district, but also our future district. This will be a building that will be 40, 50 years um, or more. Uh, and so we want to make sure we get it right. You don't really get second chances on a project this size. So I think making sure that the building um, has the attributes that we need to create learning environments that are conducive uh, for, for elementary children, um, that are you know flexible, that our community can use the space are important. Um, but I also think uh, making sure that the project stays under um, or around budget <laughs> is very important. Um, we can't put you know too much of a burden on our taxpayers. Um, we've been working towards this. Our business managers come up with a plan in terms of how we can do the financing. So making sure that we we get the building that we need, um, and not having to uh, you know overextend uh, into you know the areas that we. we can't afford. You know, there might be some things that would be fantastic and wonderful, but they're not crucial to um, children's educational outcomes. So I think those are the main considerations that I have. And I think just bringing common sense, asking questions, asking questions about, you know, where we're building the space and, and how um, it's being developed, um, and um, asking again about uh, how we're planning for the future. Because again, this is not just the building that's going to be right now in, in 2023, but Will this building be able to serve us in 2063 um, as well as it's serving us now? And so being very future minded. How do charter schools affect the Belfont Area School District and what, if any, reform do you think is needed? Sure. I think charter schools, I think parents have a right to choose what, obviously, what school um, they're the best education for their students. But I do see that um, a lot of tax dollars are leaving Belfont schools um, for students to attend charter schools, especially tr cyber charter schools. And I think where the reforms come in are trying to make sure that we have an equal playing field um, with those charter schools uh, in terms of how their dollars are spent. Uh, many of those charter schools, uh, and especially cyber charter schools, have in in incredible advertising budgets um, and fund balances that are humongous. Uh, and not really as controlled uh, or as restricted, um, you know, by law as our public schools are. And so I think uh, the reform that's needed is to make sure that charter schools are on the same playing field as the public school and also the same accountability in terms of, um, you know, performance, graduation rates, all of those types of things. I think a lot of uh, parents may not realize that, you know, they're, they're you know, the, the, the um, performance of students in charter schools is, is not at the same rate uh, to, as uh, our public schools are. Is there anything you'd like to see implemented to attract and retain high quality teachers and substitutes within the Belfont Area School District? I think one of the things that uh, is most important is really making sure that staff feel supported. Obviously, salaries and benefits are a big thing um, to teachers. Everybody has to pay their bills and make a living. But I think more than anything, um, teachers want to be in a district where they feel supported, 
um, where they feel they, they, they matter um, and where they're having an impact and where they agree with sort of the, the direction that the district is heading. So I think making sure that we listen to what our teachers are telling us about their experience working um, in the district, um, understanding the reasons why teachers are leaving, uh, whether that be um, for salary or, you know, issues of, um, you know, uh, like a, a culture or environment, um, you know, and, and addressing those. Uh, I think that that's, you know, creating a good environment for our teachers where they feel supported and our staff feel supported is key. Um, and certainly if there are other ways that we can find incentives to incentivize um, even just beyond just a paycheck. A paycheck I think is certainly important and paying our teachers well is important, but, um, but there are, it, there's more to it than just the paycheck. Are there any additional programs or initiatives that you would like to see the district implement in the areas of diversity, equity, inclusivity, and belonging? Um, I think we've started on a path where we are really looking toward um, understanding uh, the issues that might affect uh, students with regard to diversity, equity, and inclusion, access, equity, um, and the barriers that if it, any groups might face uh, in reaching their potential. Because, you know, by law, we, we are to provide an equal education, equal opportunities for all students, and so understanding how that might impact different groups. But I also think we'd be remiss in not educating our students um, more about issues that around diversity and inclusion and belonging because we are a more global society, a more cultural society. We are becoming a more diverse society, and these students are going to be working in more diverse, um, you know, work, work settings uh, with people, different backgrounds and different perspectives. And so understanding how to navigate that at a young age um, and appreciate and understand that when we have um, differences, people and different voices in general, you know, we can be more representative and more successful. That's what, you know, many businesses are finding when they have diverse voices um, at the table, you know, they're putting out a better product um, and it is more reflective um, of society in general. So I think, you know, programs that really emphasize preparing students for the future that they have, the global economy, the more cultural economy, uh, cultural, group, you know, society that they'll face, I think that that's um, where we should be moving toward. To what extent should parents or guardians be involved in the school curriculum or materials, and do you think parents should have more input on the district curriculum? Sure. I, I think the district curriculum, all of that is available on the website. I mean, folks can, can go check uh, all of that information out to know the standards that are being met, the ways that the teachers are meeting those standards. Um, I think parental involvement is something we really want to encourage because uh, students that are supported at home in their studies are going to be likely to be more, much more success successful. Uh, and so I think that, and I think student parents should have some say in the materials that their student might uh, interact with or engage with, but not necessarily um, what all students might. Uh, and so I think that that's um, a key distinction. Um, but parents are partners in the education process and um, we need to cu cultivate that relationship and, um, and, and really help them to understand, you know, the, the material, uh, the curriculum, you know, where it's headed and what the goals are and how we're meeting those goals. The topic of book banning in public schools has been discussed lately, both locally and nationally. Mm -hmm. What is your position on having books removed from public school libraries as a result of a parental concern? Like I just said, I think that parents have a right to express concern um, and uh, prohibit their student from maybe accessing material, but I don't know that a parent has the right to prevent all students from accessing that material. I mean, at least in our, in our school library, the materials that are there are made, you know, decisions are made by the educators um, based on uh, the curriculum, based on critical reviews um, and their professional association standards. And so I think those are the people that should be making the decisions on what books are available 
But as I said, a parent should have a right and an ability to offer input on what their particular student can access. Belfont superintendent recently announced that she is leaving at the end of the school year. Um, as a board member, what would you look for um, as the district undergoes the search for a new superintendent? And what do you want to see in the next superintendent? Sure, sure. I think our, our superintendent, we want somebody that is has the ability to build partnerships uh, across the community and within the district um, to really uh, create collaborative efforts uh, among all the different stakeholders. Really uh, somebody that's um, able to be um, well versed on current educational theory and trends, um, knowing and being able to kind of look at where we're, we need to get students in the next you know, 12 years, 18 years, so that we're making sure we're preparing students for the future they will face, not the, the past um, that we've had. Uh, and so um, really somebody that's innovative and creative um, and able to uh, really, you know, build a vision that can get all of the stakeholders excited about that vision and really show progress. Uh, quite honestly, somebody that's been able to demonstrate progress where, you know, they have been in education. Um, I think those are the qualities that, that I'd be looking for. Um, we have about a minute left. Is there anything else that you would like to share with the voters? Uh, I, I, I want to thank folks for the opportunity to serve in uh, this role as a, as a school director. Um, I think that uh, it takes a number of different perspectives and voices um, to be an effective board, and I think that I've brought a sense of wanting to find areas of consensus and collaboration with other board members and work together. And I've, quite honestly, I've put kids first and wanting kids' education to be put first. Uh, and so um, I would ask that people trust me again with that responsibility. It's an awesome responsibility, but we have an awesome district and an awesome team. And I think that uh, I, I look forward to being able to serve again should I be lucky enough to be reelected. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much. You have a great day. We've been talking with Julie Fitzgerald, Democrat candidate for the Belfont Area School Board. All candidates for the Belfont School Board race have been interviewed or have been invited to participate in a CNET interview. Election day is Tuesday, November 7th. For more information about voting in Center County, please visit centercountyvotes.gov. I'm Haley Kynes. Thanks for watching and please get out and vote. Hello and welcome to CNET. I'm Haley Kynes and today we're profiling the race for Belfont Area School Board Directors. With me now is Republican candidate Tim Kessling. Welcome Tim. Thank you for having me Haley. To get started, do you want to just tell me a little bit about yourself and why you're running for Belfont School Board? Sure. Um, there's a couple reasons I'm running. Uh, I, have, I feel like I have a lot to offer when it comes to the new elementary building. I've worked construction my whole life. Um, I, am a bachelor, I have a bachelor in construction management from the Pennsylvania College of Technology, and I'm also uh, a Belfont alumni. So I have two daughters that will be going through the system, and the one, the youngest one, has the ability to see the elementary school if it comes in on time and under budget. So that's a, that's a huge reason why I'm running. Um, so I feel like I have a lot to offer. As you mentioned, the district is in the process of planning for a new elementary school. Um, what would be your priorities for the project and what would you bring to the process as a school board member? So obviously the priorities wearing a construction hat would be to come in one time and under budget, as I stated before. Um, and I question sometimes, you know, those that are running, if they know uh, how a change order works and what things cost. And I feel like I can bring that to the table. Um, again, you know, I've worked my entire life in construction. Uh, I've also served on boards. You know, I'm the chair of the Associated Builders and Contractors for two years. 
Uh, I was, I'm currently the chair of the Spring Township Park and Rec Committee. We're looking to put a, uh, a park um, at Weaver Hill Road and Fiedler Road in Spring Township, so we're working through the funding to do that. So I know what the front end looks like. Um, and, you know, working for Hall Baker for 15 plus years as a project manager, I mean, this is my job. This is what I do. I do construction, try and keep things on budget, um, under budget, and on time. Uh, so, really, that's, that's my goals. How do charter schools affect the Belfont Area School District, and what, if any, reform do you think is needed? So, I don't know too much about charter schools other than the fact that um, I think we lose people to charter schools, and from what I understand, uh, when they come back from charter schools, they have to catch up. I think it's important for parents to have the ability to have that decision. If they want to send them to a charter school, they can. But I have to ask the question as to why. Why are they leaving to go to these charter schools, and what, what can we do to prevent them from leaving? Can we do anything better? And those are the questions I'm going to lean on a little bit of the existing board as to, to I need to get up to speed more on charter schools. So. Is there anything that you would like to see implemented to attract and retain high quality teachers or substitutes within the Belfont Area School District? Yeah, so in order to retain teachers, um, I think we need to have them involved with planning curriculum. Uh, I think we need to pay competitive wages. Um, and I think we need to always encourage them to, to grow professionally. I think that's important. Are there any additional programs or initiatives that you would like to see the district implement in the areas of diversity, equity, inclusivity, and belonging? You know, I think, you know, the current DII policy uh, at Belfont kind of addresses my philosophy on that already. Okay. To what extent do you think parents or guardians should be involved in the school curriculum or materials and do you think that parents should have more input on the district curriculum? Well, in my humble opinion, I think parents are the first teachers. Hands down, they are the first ones to teach. And once kids start public school, there has to be a level of trust, um, a level of transparency and mutual respect. I think teachers are the professionals and we need to trust them to do the job. The topic of book banning in public schools has been discussed lately, um, both locally and nationally. What is your position on having books removed from public school libraries as a result of parental concerns? So I think it's up to the school superintendent uh, and instructional staff to, to keep in mind the Board of Education, you know, you need to keep in mind the Board of Education approves all curriculum. So I feel that as a board, it's kind of micromanaging and and hence the importance of hiring uh, a superintendent, which is which is news to, to Belfont. I guess we're going to be looking for a superintendent. So, yeah, um, my next question is actually about that. Um, so Belfont Superintendent Lee recently announced that she's leaving at the end of the school year. Um, if elected to the board, what would you look for as the district undergoes a super undergoes a search for a new superintendent, and what do you want to see in the next superintendent? Oh my goodness, there's a list a mile long. Um, a good educational background, uh, someone who understands business operations of a school district, uh, an individual who understands state and federal law and special education and school law in general, um, knowledge in curriculum and instruction, uh, needs to be very involved with hiring uh, teachers and principals, they need to be active with that. Um, and that's where, you know, I got to throw a little plug in here for Win for Belfont, but that's where I think we excel uh, as a pack. Um, we're running independent of teacher influence as opposed to retired teachers and teacher spouses. Uh, to me, that presents a conflict of interest when serving on a committee and evaluating the superintendent and with teacher negotiations. It, it really convolutes things and it, you know, I raise the question is, is there ulterior motives? So. If elected to the board, how would you ensure transparency in the board's decision making and communication with community members about those decisions? So that's that's my job as a board member. I mean, I have to be the middleman between the board and the community. And I've lived in Belfort my whole life. I love the community. I know a lot of people. And my job is to be their voice, nothing more. It's for the kids 100%. And beyond that, I have to listen to the community and basically relay that information to the board and work with it. 
Are there any particular areas within the school budget that you believe needs more attention or restructuring? Um, the budget is a big thing, especially with construction. Um, I think that it needs to be gone through with a fine tooth comb, and I think we need to find out where we're you know, heavy and where we're thin and how to adjust it and tweak it to get the most bang for our buck. And, and even though you know, there's an undisclosed amount budget for the construction project right now, I mean, we have to be cognizant of what we want to spend. And, if, if, and, I, and mark my words, it'll happen. There will be a change order in the construction process. And when it does, we have to be cognizant of what things cost and if we can still bring it in on time and under budget. And we need to, to micromanage the construction process with boots on the ground and make sure that we're not getting overcharged for something we don't need to be. As a board member, what would you do to ensure financial stability within the school district? Well, financial stability is, is basically being involved with the community and finding a way to get money in uh, to help the school district. And I'm open to suggestions there. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a challenging topic, and, and I, I think there's ways to do it. Um, we just need to figure out the right ways. Is there more that the district should be doing to promote sustainability? You know, that, that's tough. I mean, as far as sustainability, you mean like like green energy or are you talking, okay, so. Sure, yeah, whatever um, that means to you. That's tough. I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's geothermal, there's hydroelectricity, you know, some of those things obviously don't make sense. And then there's solar panels and that that presents some problems too. Um, so as far as sustainability, I think those are discussions for, for professionals. And, and even though, you know, I've worked construction, I know John Gazar's worked construction on, on the board, so he would have a very good input on this, but um, there's things that make sense and don't make sense in my opinion. Um, we have a few minutes left. Is there anything else that you would like to share with the voters? Um, yeah, actually, uh, I just, I want to stress the importance of why I'm running and it's, it's, you know, I have, I have two daughters in the district in my construction background. I'm solely in this for the new elementary school and to learn as I go. I don't know everything. I'm not perfect, um, but I'm here to ask questions and learn. Um, I know I have experience on boards um, and I think that community service is, is a big part and I think that I want to give back to the community and being a Belfont alumni is, is part of it too. And I'll leave you with, with one thing. Actually, I got this, this text um, this morning from my, my wife, and this is exactly why I do it, right here. Yeah. I love you, Daddy. That's my daughter, and that was my good luck text this morning for my interview, so uh, that's exactly why I do it right there. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, thank you for having me. We've been talking with Tim Kessling, Republican candidate for the Belfont Area School Board. All candidates for the Belfont School Board race have been invited to participate in a CNET interview. Election day is Tuesday, November 7th, and for more information about voting in Center County, please visit centercountyvotes.gov. I'm Haley Kynes. Thanks for watching, and please get out and vote. Hello and welcome to CNET. I'm Haley Kynes and today we're profiling the race for Belfont Area School Board Directors. With me now is Republican candidate Daryl Sharp. Welcome Daryl. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate the time. Yeah, to get started, do you just want to tell me a little bit about yourself and why you're running for Belfont School Board? Yeah, sure. I've been a resident of the Belfont area for just short of 20 years. I got three kids in the district, two attending Marion Walker, one in the middle school, and uh, that's the biggest reason I want to get involved, right, is um, emotionally invested in it and I want to do everything I can to represent the Belfont community and uh, have an impact on, you know, my child's education and all the kids of the district. So, um, yeah, that's the, the biggest motivation and it keeps me uh, driving to do something different. So I'm going to give it a run and see what happens. The district is in the process of planning for a new elementary school. 
what would be your priorities for the project and what would you bring to the process as a school board member? Yeah, I think the priorities are to listen to the community. It's a, a once in a generation investment, right? It's a lot of money for a, a pretty small community like Belfont. Um, you're talking a you know, 40, 50 million dollar building. Um, it's important, you gotta have good resources, a good, you know, good structures, bring in good talent. That's how you get good teachers that wanna work there and you know, newest technology. Um, that's, so that's important, like make it, uh, make it one investment, do it right, do it once, right? Don't have any regrets at it. Um, and while you're know, obviously still respecting a budget, right? Money isn't unlimited. So um, yeah, it's important just to, I think they're doing a pretty good job if anyone's been following it, you know, online, they've been having like community forums and the structure they got going on, they're listening while still you know, maintaining a budget and everything. So I say they're on a really good track. They got some good you know, contractors involved. I think what I bring is, uh, you know, I have a degree in electromechanical engineering, so I have a little bit of engineering background. Uh, currently a plant manager at a big industrial uh, operation about four miles away from where that building will be built. So we're very used to running you know, multi-million dollar projects. Um, it's not, you know, over my head. It's very commonplace. Um, so there again, you know, some experience, level-headedness, we'll let the, the numbers overwhelm me. Um, and yeah, just, yeah, I can bring that the talent of you know, running a business decision and treat the taxpayer's money with the same level of importance, right? It's, it's big and it'll be used for, I mean, just like our current buildings, 50 plus years. So yeah, I think my experience I bring from educational and um, professional experience will be valuable in you know, helping run a project like that. How do charter schools affect the Belfont Area School District and what, if any, reform do you think is needed? Yeah, I'm a big, I, I like that they exist. I'm like pro charter schools. I think parents should have choices. Being a parent myself, I, I'd want to have choices. It should drive competition, right? In the, the capitalist world, competition drives quality. Um, so I think that parents should have a choice. I believe what's not fair now, what needs to be reformed is the calculations on how the money is split between, uh, let me say like the Belfont School District, the normal school district and the charter schools. It, now it's just, it's terribly unfair. Um, so if, there, if the charter schools are gonna compete with the public school system, uh, that should be better balanced in those calculations to be more fair right now. It's, they get way too much money per student and they're not held to the same standards. So um, competition is good, but when the playing field is equal, and right now I think uh, charter schools have a, a pretty decent unfair advantage. So I think we need to keep pushing for the legislative changes to, to, to bring that balance back to it. And parents need a choice, but uh, it's gonna be hard. I mean, Belfont has to pay it out of their own pocket and it's just, it's, uh, it's just not balanced right now. So the reform needs to be uh, keep them there, but what's, what's the, to get the rules to be the same, right? Um, what it truly costs to educate a child in Belfont, that's what can be passed on to the charter schools and then hold them to the same standards. If our teacher has to meet certain qualifications and attend certain trainings, you can't just be bringing in anyone, paying them fractionally what we're paying a teacher and you're gonna compete, you'll, you'll, you'll get crushed every single time. So um, let's get the, the financial playing field level and then let's see what the competition can you know, it'll sort itself out from there. Is there anything that you would like to see implemented to attract and retain high quality teachers and substitutes within the Belfont School District? Yeah, I think the, the new the building project will be huge, right? If you look at, they, they, it's a really well kept building, but the old Belfont Elementary, it's downtown there is just, I mean, it's just old, right? Um, you know, today, the modern teacher wants to have access to the you know, the newest and greatest, you know, online, you know, teaching tools, nice projectors or smart boards in the classrooms, um, you, know, you know, a good array of what would be iPads or tablets, you know, good up-to-date Chromebooks, like, like it or not, that's where it's all going. So um, let's have, let's give them the best technology, the best resources, you know, the best classrooms, the cleanest buildings. Um, the, the, the middle school is relatively new, high school is really re newly renovated. Uh, my kids are fortunate enough they attend Marion Walker, which is one of the newest, if not the newest, elementary school. So I think that's, that's going to bring in talent, right, is uh, having the, the best environment. It's a great community. I mean, you got the little bit of the downtown feel, the historic elements of Belfont. you got the rural community, so we have a good environment for people to live in. Um, I think you up that technology, up the, you know, update all your, your buildings, and you'll start attracting really good talent. Are there any additional programs or initiatives that you would like to see the district implement in the areas of diversity, equity, inclusivity, and belonging? Yeah, I mean, this is a similar question asked the, you know, during the first round of the scene interviews, and my position really hasn't changed. I think it's those, you know, the DEI is all with good intentions. It truly is, but I just don't know how you ever apply it without bad things occurring. Um, 
so you, for me, like there again, you want to hire, you talk about, you know, hiring teachers, it just, it should be about qualifications, you know, <laughs> sex, religion, all that stuff. It doesn't matter, right? Like it, it does have no place in the, in the classroom anyway. So it's just, we focused on, are they a good teacher? Where, where, where do they attend school? What experiences do they have? How passionate they are about, you know, learning? Can they help us with um, sports? They have, you know, can they bring another experience in, right? With their, you know, with the coaching, are they willing to volunteer for the community? They fit to the community. That's the stuff that matters. Then all this, it's become very, very popular, very trendy, but I don't, I think it's, it's taking away from the traits we should be really looking for when we're hiring or, you know, doing anything in the district. So there again, I truly believe that you know, the vast majority of the time, these DEI practices or the, the thought process comes from a good place. I really believe it does, but uh, I, I just have yet to see it or understand how it can be implemented without having negative effects. I think you're going to miss out on talent. You're going to, you know, by default, you know, separate, you know, kids from uh, something they should be on. I think I gave the example last time of a, you know, if you're, if it's track and field time and you're assembling your track meet, you just line everyone up. And if you're looking for the hundred meter, you know, uh, contestants, who's the fastest, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing for teachers. Who's the most qualified, uh, you know, race, religion, sex, background, that uh, stuff is all in the wash. It doesn't mean anything. It's, are you a good teacher? We want to hire you. Are you the best for this? You should be in that spot, right? So yeah, I just, be very careful about how far we push those is where I would stand on the DEI initiatives. To what extent do you think parents or guardians should be involved in the school curriculum or materials? And um, do you think that parents should have more input on the district curriculum? Yeah, I think you gotta hire the teachers and you gotta let them do their job, right? Um, that's why it's, I think it's important right now we have the chance in Belfont that we're gonna be hiring a new superintendent and that's that is the leadership position. That's the executive branch of the district, right? And the school board is going to have a huge say in that. So you get the right leader in place, and he or she can hold you know, the teachers accountable, all the staff, all the support staff accountable, right? That's that's how you're going to um, you know produce the best results. But yeah, what was the really the question with me again? Yeah. Um, to what extent do you think parents or guardians should be involved in the school curriculum or materials, and should parents have more? Um, input or say yeah. on the curriculum. Yes, yeah, so I think that now is, you know, the, the, where I was going with it, that's now is their chance to have a say, right? You're going to have the biggest impact voting for the people, get them on the board that has an impact. And besides that, once you're confident that you have the right leadership in place, then let them do their job, right? Like review it, be involved. You know, as a parent, I would like to, I know recently Belfont just sent out a list, you know, for example, for the middle school of my uh, son, my oldest son is just heading there and you got to review, here's the books that are available. Do you want them to have access to it or not? I think that's acceptable. I don't want to have you, 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 you're never going to get everyone on the same page anyhow. So yeah, be involved. You're, I think they send out a lot of information right now. Parents should have access to it. But the same token, like the teachers have got to be focused on teaching the kids, not appeasing every single parent that they have, might have to deal with, right? You're just going to get caught up in this. We're going to be wasting your time and not actually focus on education. So um, I think they do a, a pretty good balance, you know, right now, listening to them. They open up, you know, the parents are welcome to attend the, the school board meetings and be involved. But yeah, right now, I think it's critical, you know, do your research, select the right candidate. They're going to be choosing the next leader of the district, and that's going to set the tone for which direction it goes. So, The topic of book banning in public schools has been discussed lately, both locally and nationally. What is your position on having books removed from public school libraries as a result of parental concerns? Yes, yeah, so just an example, example uh, you know, not knowing the question was coming up, but we got to review that. and. It's like anything else. I think if enough parents, you know, every once in a while, someone might not even intentionally with any type of you know e evil intent or anything, like a book will slip in where it might have some inappropriate content, and you know you, you listen to the parents and then evaluate it as educators. If it if it's going to bring value, you know, stand firm on. It. Even as a parent, we're not always right. <laughs> no one always is right. So uh, have an opinion, but then be open to like uh, it's an opinion, right? It's not not right or wrong. It's just it's just that it's an opinion. So um, yeah. If, you know, they should be listened to and, you know, have a say, but at some point you have to trust your educators that they'll put the right stuff in play. So, yeah, at the end of the day, if you just start banning every book people don't want, I mean, we might not have anything in a library, right? But, um, yeah, it's, you know, tread lightly, listen, but then if we believe we're making the best decision and giving access to the appropriate books at the appropriate age levels, then stick with it. And as you previously mentioned as well, um, Belfont superintendent recently announced that she is leaving at the end of the school year. So if elected to the board, what would you look for as the district undergoes the search for a new superintendent? And what do you want to see in the next superintendent? Yeah, I think someone is just 
not afraid to challenge the status quo. I mean, unfortunately, Belfont, uh, recent reports came out, kind of one of the lowest, you know, rated districts in the area. And it doesn't have to be, right? But, you know, bring in some fresh talent and maybe it's internal, maybe Bill don't hesitate to look external as well. I mean, outside the, the state, if possible, there again, it's, do they fit that, you know, the, the small town community values we want to bring to Belfont, you know, as, as a district in whole. Um, so, yeah, don't be afraid to hire someone that's, you know, different, an outsider, quote unquote, but because <clears throat> that's how you bring good ideas, a fresh set of eyes brings good ideas, ask good questions, uh, someone who's not afraid to, you know, be tough and challenge, set a high standard and then hold everyone to it. <clears throat> I like it, and I see it in my job currently is something where if you, if you let poor performance, like, you know, unfortunately we have lots of great teachers, but not all of them can be great. It's just the reality of it. So if you have lower performing ones or, or lower performing staff in general, hold on accountable for that. You'll get more out of your better people. Like I think there's nothing that motivates, there's more demotivating for any individual than having to work with someone that's not you know, carrying their own weight. And I think I can imagine it still applies with teachers. If you know, if you've got three or four, say third grade teachers and you know, they'll, they know deep down if there's someone underperforming, we need to have you know, a tough leader who will make those tough calls and have those tough conversations and be like, hey, you know, we noticed this, we noticed that. You gotta step up your game and you know, let's, let's all continue to elevate our performance. So. Yeah, look for someone, like I said, I would encourage, you know, outside and someone that has great experience um, and is not, you know, afraid to you know, make those tough decisions that will drive, you know, good, high quality education for our children. Um, we have about a minute left. Is there anything else that you would like to share with the voters? Yeah, no, I appreciate the time for sure. And I sign off the same way I did last time. You know, I encourage everyone to do your homework. If I'm the candidate that you know, believes it fits for Belfont, then you know, please vote for me in November. Um, if you want more information about me, you can look me up on Facebook, uh, Sharp for Belfont School District or Belfont School Board. Um, I have a lot, a lot of postings on there, trying to get some people to follow that. But yeah, I encourage every voter, do your homework, put the people in place, me or not me, that fit your values. That's, that's the most important thing for our district. So yeah, and again, I appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks. We've been talking with Daryl Sharp, Republican candidate for the Belfont Area School Board. All candidates for the Belfont School Board have been invited to participate in a CNET interview. Election day is Tuesday, November 7th, and for more information about voting in Center County, please visit centercountyvotes.gov. I'm Haley Kynes, thanks for watching, and please get out and vote. Hello and welcome to CNET. I'm Haley Kynes and today we're profiling the race for Belfont Area Board of School Directors. With me now is Democrat candidate Donna Smith. Welcome Donna. Hi, welcome, or thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. So um, to get started, do you just want to tell me a little bit about yourself and why you're running for the Belfont School Board? Sure. I am the mother of two uh, grown adult children who were graduates of the Belfont School District. I have two grandchildren who will be graduating from the school district. Uh, I worked for my whole career as a teacher there and when I retired about five years ago I was department chair of the language arts department. I currently serve on the board. I have a position of, on the platform, or excuse me, the policy committee. I am also a uh, legislative liaison, which means that when a uh, legislator has a bill in Harrisburg that affects public education, um, I let the board know about that and vice versa. I let the legislator know how something affects our school district, be it positively or negatively. So I do those two things. On the state level, I sit on the uh, platform committee and also I'm a legislative advisor for PSBA. So I'm quite busy when it comes to the school district. Why I'm running? Originally, I ran because I believe in my whole heart in public education and I have a fondness for the school district and for the students that I've taught for many years. And I felt that I had a lot to give specifically I have finished five years and there are a few things that are um, still that we have to 
you know, finish, one being the, the superintendent search, that's a big one, and the other is our building project and our other facilities maintenance. So those are two things that I would really like to see come to fruition. I've worked very hard at those things, and I would sure like to be around to see them, you know, the final product. Yeah, thank you. Um, so as you just mentioned, the district is in the process of planning for a new elementary school. Um, what would be your priorities for the project and what would you bring to the process as a school board member? Well, the priorities are set already by uh, all the stakeholders. The priorities were set by the administrators, the superintendent, the teachers. Uh, they've all weighed in on the priorities, but we want something that is going to be um, be future ready that our students in the future are going to be able to use that um, is going to be exciting and open and safe and um, something that our school district is proud of and as a school board member I've been involved with the project from the beginning so I am able I've asked the questions I have looked at the budget I have looked at the plans and I can offer my uh, expertise on what we've decided so far and holding all of our, uh, pro um, our, manager, our construction managers and our architects and accountable for what they, they said that they would be doing. How do charter schools affect the Belfont Area School District and what, if any, reform do you think is needed? Charter schools themselves don't affect the Belfont School District. We are all in agreement that school choice is very important. So it's not the charter school specifically. There are brick and mortar and then there are cyber charter schools. It's the funding. And that is something that I have advocated for for the past five years across the state. So they affect us because we write a $3.8 million check every year to various of these both brick and mortar and cyber charter, but the cyber charter are the ones that seem to be uh, the most problematic. So for example, with one small change, and that is a flat fee that's going to cyber charter schools, instead of the entire $13,000 per pupil, up to $32,000 per pupil, but paying them what they um, are actually spending, that one change will save our taxpayers a half million dollars in one year. So we had to specifically raise taxes this past year to make up that $500,000. So again, it's not the schools themselves, it's the way they are funded and they're improperly funded. And that's something that I have been working on in earnest ever since I got on the school board. Is there anything you'd like to see implemented to attract and retain high quality teachers or substitutes within the Belfont Area School District? We want to make sure that, well, we have a wonderful school district, and fortunately we've been able to do that, but we need to make sure that we have a positive atmosphere, that we support our teachers, and we give them the resources that they need, and that uh, the board is supportive and the community is supportive, and I believe that we are those things because we have really some outstanding teachers. Are there any additional programs or initiatives that you'd like to see the district implement in the areas of diversity, equity, inclusivity, and belonging? Um, we are continuing to do in-service training or professional learning in that field. Um, one of the things that I think would be interesting if we could open it up to members of the community to open up you know all of those opportunities and for students themselves so it's something that's ongoing and I believe it's very important to what extent should parents or guardians be involved in school curriculum or the materials and um, do you think parents and guardians should have more input on the district curriculum Having been a person who helped write, I will say, write curriculum, there's very little um, choice that a school district has. The state sets the standards. The standards then dictate the curriculum. So writing the curriculum almost is a non-factor because the curriculum is already practically written. Then it is up to the teachers and a, and a committee of teachers to select the materials. Parents always have an option to, they don't necessarily, they can't really write the curriculum. Again, the teachers 
don't have a lot of say so when it comes to the curriculum but they have the opportunity to view the materials and they are open for public view and if there's something that they disagree with they may opt their child out um, and I think that's a, a good policy. The topic of book banning in public schools has been discussed lately both locally and nationally. What is your position on having books removed from public school libraries as a result of parental concerns? I don't believe that a parent or a community member has the right to remove a book for another child. Educators are put in the position to use their educational expertise to select the materials for valid reasons. If a parent doesn't want the child to read a particular book, he or she has the absolute right to not have their child read that book, and there are ways to do that. That's happened to me in my classroom before. But to prevent another student from reading something that their parents believe that they should be able to read is their right to, so. How would you ensure transparency in the board's decision making and communication with community members about decisions made? I think the board is transparent. I think it's more of a perception of transparency. So everything we do follows the sunshine laws. Uh, board meetings are televised. People may attend a board meeting. Um, but something that I have been very interested in and actually have gotten the ball rolling is writing a board newsletter. So raising awareness that those things exist and of course encouraging people to come to meetings and to read the, read the board newsletter I think would be very helpful. But we are transparent. Um, could we be doing better with transparency? I would like to hear some suggestions from what the community feels that they don't know, but please attend meetings. <laughs> we would really like that. Um, as you previously mentioned, Belfont Superintendent recently announced that she is leaving at the end of the school year. Um, if reelected to the board, what would you like, or what would you look for um, as the district undergoes a search for a new superintendent, and what do you want to see in the next superintendent? So we are going to be talking about that very soon, and that is what are the qualities that we would like to have in a superintendent. Mrs. Berna Ford was an excellent um, example of a, an, a great superintendent. And so I can go by what she's done and some things that she has done that I will also um, hope to look for in the next superintendent is students are absolutely first. All of her decisions surrounded were made because of student first, student first. What is in the student's best interest? That and communication. She had a great um, rapport with the, the board, with administrators and teachers and members of the community, and they responded very well. And I think it is because of her caring about the students and her communication um, that we were able to get through the COVID, and she steered that big ship that's the school district uh, very well. So uh, those are two of the attributes that I would be most keenly looking for um, in our next superintendent. Are there any particular areas within the school budget that you believe need more attention or restructuring? Um, and if not, what would you do to ensure financial stability within the school district? So we have had some deferred maintenance projects. And that is something that the board most recently in the past year or two have um, really started to focus on. And something that we've done is put aside $500,000 a year so we can take care of those deferred maintenance projects. So as far as our budget is concerned, that is something that we have done, that we've set aside, that we think that we should be putting more attention into, and that is um, taking care of our deferred maintenance projects. Um, is there any, sorry, let me rephrase that. Is there more that the district should be doing to promote sustainability within the community or within its own buildings? We discussed that a little bit um, at our last uh, school board meeting um, regarding sustainability. And when we are building our new building, that is something that we're going to be mindful of. And then moving forward, 
what can we do to our other buildings to make them more energy efficient and more sustainable but that is something that we are just really starting to talk about and is going to be on everybody's radar um we have about a minute left is there anything else that you would like to share with the voters I would like to first shout out to the Belfont School teachers for giving me their endorsement, regardless of how the election turns out. That is something that I really take to heart, and I appreciate their trust in me. Um, I would also like to mention that there's so much noise, not just our school district, but across the state and the nation, um, about school boards and what they do and what they shouldn't be doing. But honestly, what we really do is we really focus on budgets, facilities, creating the framework work for student success, um, the superintendent, things like that. And, and it is important that we select the right people on the board who have the institutional knowledge and the educational background to get those things done. And hopefully people know me enough to know that I will be able to do those things and I will work my hardest to make sure that they're all done. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. We've been talking with Donna Smith, a Democrat candidate for the Belfont Area School Board. All candidates for the Belfont School Board race have been invited to participate in a CNET interview. Election day is Tuesday, November 7th, and for more information about voting in Center County, please visit centercountyvotes.gov. I'm Haley Kynes. Thanks for watching and please get out and vote. Hello and welcome to CNET. I'm Haley Kynes and today we're profiling the race for Belfont Area Board of School Directors. With me now is Republican candidate Kim Weaver. Welcome Kim. Thank you for having me. To get started, do you just want to tell me a little bit about yourself and why you're running for Belfont School Board? Sure. Well, obviously my name is Kim Weaver. I've lived in the district for most of my life. Between my husband and I, we have six children. And in the spring, I said that we had eight grandchildren, but now we actually are going to have 10 grandchildren. And so I am, would like to continue to stay on the board. I'm currently a member of the board. And there are things that I really like to see through. We have a program that's called the MTSS program, which is helping our elementary students um, push through these years uh, COVID years and learning, close those learning gaps. Also, um, I'm a part of the CPI board, and I'd like to continue to see the growth with CPI that opens the doors for our students at CPI. Um, the district is in the process of planning for a new elementary school. What would be your priorities for the project, or what are your priorities for the project, and what would you bring to the process as a school board member? <coughs> Sorry. Um, my priorities are what, what we're doing right now with our, um, our manager, our site logic manager. He is pushing through. He is doing a great job with our elementary project, and we're on a great timeline. So I'd like to see that timeline to continue through. Um, I think that I bring to the, the table, I'm, a, I'm an educator, an elementary educator at a, a district beside us and I have those qualifications. I may not know a whole lot about the building and the infrastructure and that kind of thing, but I certainly know what goes into an elementary classroom. Mm -hmm. How do charter schools affect the Belfont School District and what, if any, reform do you think is needed? Well, the charter schools definitely affect our budget. I mean, we have over $7 million going out to the charter schools. Um, I do believe that reform is needed. I believe that, you know, financial reform is needed. I believe that, you know, I don't have a problem with charter schools in the sense of parents having that choice, but I do believe that we have to hold them to the same standards that is held to the public schools, the same education standards and uh, all of those kinds of things versus just handing them the the district handing over the money and they're not they're not being held accountable 
Is there anything that you would like to see implemented to attract and retain high quality teachers or substitutes um, within the Belfont School District? <clears throat> well, that's a tough one because, I mean, teaching teaching's a hard job. Um, we They do a lot. They have to deal with a lot. Sometimes, it, it, <laughs> I'm just thinking of a some days are easier than others but is in that same respect it is such a rewarding job mm -hmm. just the continued um, support from administrators um, content the little things that can make a difference think about even um, in your own job whether you're in education or any type of job just those small things that people know that you're that you feel appreciated mm -hmm. Are there any additional programs or initiatives that you would like to see the district implement in the areas of diversity, equity, inclusivity, and belonging? I mean, I think that we have a great program in place. I think that um, we have two people who are in charge of the program already. Uh, Michelle Simpson and Mike Bachman are doing a great job. They inform the board of what's going on just to continue the what we have in place and to continue to always make forward progress with that. To what extent should parents or guardians be involved in school curriculum or materials and do you think parents should have more input on district curriculum? I welcome speaking from like my own experience I welcome parents into my classroom and to to give ideas. I think that um, the, the aid saying of it takes a village, it's really true. When we have um, our educators are working with our parents, it really shows them the students that we're together. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that collaboration and working together with maybe parent groups and that kind of thing is a great way and being open communication. I mean, knowing like, okay, this is the curriculum we're using. This is why the curriculum we're using it. Um, I think that that plays a crucial crucial role in in working together and raising raising taking the using the village mm -hmm. to raise the children. The topic of book banning in public <coughs> schools has been discussed lately, um, both locally and nationally. What is your position on having books removed from public school libraries as a result of parental concerns? I guess, truthfully, I, I, I haven't given it a whole lot of thought. Um, books are, are definitely crucial in, in education, and I certainly don't want to stifle any learning and that kind of thing. I would definitely say though that it needs to be age appropriate and what I feel is age appropriate may not be what you feel is age appropriate. So in that instance that's where I think um, we reach out to parents because everyone has different opinions on that. So I know for instance the school, Belfont School, has sent home permissions of these are books that we're going to be reading this year sign off if you want your child to read it. If not, there's other um, options that they can read, which is in the same genre and stuff. So I think that when in doubt, that's when we reach out to parents. And I think, again, it falls back to open communication and having those relationships. I believe relationships are extremely important. Mm -hmm. And again, what I feel may be OK may not be what you feel is OK. And that's perfectly fine to feel that way. Belfont superintendent recently announced that <laughs> she is leaving at the end of the school year. Um, if re-elected to the board, what would you look for as the district undergoes a search for a new superintendent? And what do you want to see in the next superintendent? Well, right now our district has put forth an initiative of a data-driven uh, atmosphere. I'd like to continue to see that. Not everything I know is not everything is always data driven, but I'd like to see that course course move forward. Um, holding teachers, I mean, all the qualities that we have with kindness and compassion and and uh, being able to reach out to the community and feeling a part of Belfont community and also holding 
um, people accountable and, and making those hard decisions when they have to be made. It's not always easy when we have to say no to something, but mm -hmm. being able to say no and make those hard decisions when the time comes. As a board member, how would you ensure transparency in the board's decision making and communication with the public and community members? Well, um, all of our board meetings are videoed by CNET and they can view them online and on the CNET. Um, we also currently have a board newsletter um, reaching out just the community also staying informed, asking questions, um, reaching out, seeing the videos, seeing the newsletter, reaching out to board members, that kind of thing. Are there any particular areas within the school budget that you believe needs more attention or restructuring? Well, as I always tell our budget person, you got to use manipulatives because I teach kindergarten, so those really big numbers. But I believe that our uh, fiscal uh, officer, Mr. Bean, does a great job, and he is really great with explaining any questions that we have. So while I believe there's always room to look at things right now, I don't have anything specific, but there could be things that come up. But Mr. Bean has done a great job, and he's always kept us extremely informed. What would you do if reelected to ensure financial stability within the school district? Well, again, this goes back to our financial officer. He does a great job with, with keeping us informed. And right now, we have a great budget we're on the right track with our elementary building. We don't even have to raise taxes for our elementary building because we've already built that into the budget. So <clears throat> I think that, again, we're on the right track. And as long as we continue to be fiscally responsible, watch our spending, watch what we need, and always do what we need to for our students, that we will always make the, the better choices. Is there more that the district should be doing to promote sustainability, in your opinion? Mm. Again, this is one thing that I probably haven't thought a whole lot of. So for me to answer yes or no, I mean, it would be unfair. Okay. Um, well, we have about a minute left. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with the voters? I would just like to say um, to con thank you for voting for me and that I will continue to put forth a, an amazing effort. I believe in our public education system. I believe in Belfont School District and um, the future that it has. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. We've been talking with Kim Weaver, Republican candidate for the Belfont Area School Board. All candidates for the Belfont School Board race have been invited to participate in a CNET interview. Election day is Tuesday, November 7th. For more information about voting in Center County, please visit centercountyvotes.gov. I'm Haley Kynes. Thanks for watching and please get out and vote. Hello and welcome to CNET. I'm Haley Kynes and today we're profiling the race for Belfont Area School District Board of Directors. With me now is Democrat Joe Yeck. Welcome Joe. Thank you Haley. It's great to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. So to get started, do you just want to tell me a little bit about yourself and why you're running for Belfont School Board? Sure. My wife and I, on a personal level, we have three kids in the district two at Marion Walker Elementary and very exciting. We had one that moved up to the middle school this year. I have that personal connection to the school district in that way and I wanna have more of a connection to the schools. I think I can help contribute, set our schools up for a very strong future. The district is in the process of planning for a new elementary school. 
what would be your priorities for the project and what would you bring to the process as a school board member? That's a great question. I think this elementary school is a great thing for our school system and the community. It fixes some aging infrastructure needs that we have with some of our other elementary schools. I would like to make sure that we have our budget and we do what we can to stick to that budget for the taxpayers, but also maximize what that new building will be able to provide for our students through technology, through layout, through different educational opportunities. And from what I've been hearing about the plans, that seems to be going that direction. I would like to be on the board to help make sure it stays in that direction. How do charter schools affect the Belfont Area School District and what, if any, reform do you think is needed? Charter schools, by means of students leaving Belfont Area School District and moving into charter schools that are not affiliated with the school district, siphon funds away from our schools. We do have a cyber program, Bella, through the Belfont Area School District to help offer a different learning opportunity for students that if they would explore that as well, it would be great. But taking funding from our schools, it helps limit what we can offer our students. So I, I would like to see a way that we can keep our schools funded fairly and equitably. Is there anything that you would like to see implemented to attract and retain high quality teachers or substitutes within the Belfont School District? Yes, to me that is one of the top issues that our school district and school districts across the state are going to be facing. There has been a significant drop statistically in the amount of teachers graduating from universities, which will trickle to all of our school systems as more teachers reach that wonderful retirement system. They put their time in, they retire. We need to have a way that we can replace them. One area that I want to make sure we are addressing is when we have teachers that aren't retiring but leaving our school district for other reasons, that we help figure out why they're leaving. And if it's due to a cultural issue or some other problem with the school district that we can help repair to retain our teachers so we don't have to replace them as well as the teachers who are reaching their retirement. Mm. Are there any additional programs or initiatives that you would like to see the district implement in the areas of diversity, equity, inclusivity, and belonging? I think we need to make sure we keep a focus on those programs. Diversity is good for not just school districts, but communities as well. It brings different ways of thinking. So I encourage the school district to stay involved with that, and we need to be mindful of it as the future comes at us that we aren't missing the ball and being behind when those opportunities are coming that other uh, school districts are taking advantage of. I want us to keep that at the forefront when we're thinking about uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion so that we're the trendsetters to make sure that we have a diverse population. To what extent do you think parents or guardians should be involved in school curriculum or materials? And should parents have more input on district curriculum? This question to me leads more towards you know, transparency with the school district and making sure that parents know what the school district is doing. I do think that the school district needs to maintain its transparency with parents to let parents know this is what we're teaching our children. This is what we are doing. Our educators and our staff are trained to develop curriculum that will be good for our students. So I, I trust them to do that. I find this to be more of a, our parents need to be informed of what we are doing, but we need to let our trained professionals make the curriculum decisions. 
The topic of book banning in public schools has been discussed lately, uh, both locally and nationally. What is your position on having books removed from public school li from public school libraries as a result of parental concerns? This is one of those topics that is out there all across the nation. We can pick up a newspaper or scroll through the headlines online and probably find something about it every day. My stance on it is that we have professionals in our school systems, our educators, our staff, who are trained to select books and materials that have educational value for our students. We need to let them do their jobs and select that material. I don't personally believe in book banning. I will happily listen to concerns from parents because parents are always going to have concerns. That, that's part of being a parent. I'm a parent myself, I know that. But we have a system in place to make sure that what we have in our school districts is appropriate and is educationally valuable for our students. Belfont superintendent recently announced that she is leaving at the end of the school year. If elected to the board, what would you look for as the district undergoes a search for a new superintendent? And what do you want to see in the next superintendent? I would be very excited to be part of the search for a new superintendent. This person needs to be someone that definitely keeps the value of our school towards our students, uh, towards supporting our teachers and our staff because our teachers are the backbone of the school system as we talked about earlier. This person needs to have an educational background, needs to be someone who knows how to manage other administrators uh, to make sure that they are in tune with what the school district is doing and as a board, we need to help that person also make sure we're keeping an eye on where the school district is going. Um, you mentioned transparency earlier. As a board member, how would you ensure transparency in the board's decision making and communication with the public and community members? Right now, the school board has open meetings that anyone can attend. I think that is a great thing. It's, it is very transparent. I've been to numerous meetings myself. The board has also implemented a newsletter to put out to summarize uh, the decisions that are made. I think that's great. I think we need to expand it to make sure we have a way to get that information. So we have the in-person, we have a newsletter. The CNET records all the board meetings so that people can view them after the meetings to see how the decisions are made, what is talked about at board meetings. I think we do a pretty decent job in Belfont at being transparent and making sure that parents have the opportunity to be involved. Are there any particular areas within the school budget that you believe needs more attention or restructuring? Right now, I don't believe there are any particular areas. I would like to make sure that we keep opportunities available for our students in the arts, the sciences, the extracurricular opportunities. Sometimes we may have to make some tough decisions that we may have to raise taxes to keep all those opportunities for our students. It's not a topic that people like to talk about and people definitely don't like to hear that their taxes might go up because of that. But if we can continue to develop well-rounded students that move into our community, it helps us have a better community as a whole. What would you do to ensure financial stability within the school district? That's a great question. Uh, financial stability, it, it stems from having a good, strong community, having enough of a base that when we have that tax burden, we have the, enough of a base to, to draw from, from, excuse me, and keep our schools strong. 
So by making sure we have a strong school system that provides a great opportunity for our students, when people are looking to move into the area, that will highlight Belfont for them. And I want them to be able to say, I want to move into the Belfont Area School District so that my kids can have a great opportunity. That's one reason why I moved into the Belfont Area School District. I wanted to be there for the school system. I think it's a great school system. I wanted us to be there and we are part of that financial stability. Um, we have about a minute left, but is there anything else that you would like to share with the voters? Sure. I guess it comes down to how my wife and I are wanting to raise our kids and see them grow and develop. We want them to be open-minded, free-thinking individuals when they reach adulthood and know that when they ask why something happened or how something happens, that they have the skills to go and figure that out for themselves and not rely on other people who may give them biased answers. I want to bring that philosophy with me to the school board and how I will make decisions on policy and help set our school system up to be strong for the future generations that will come through it. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much. We've been talking with Joe Yuck, Democrat candidate for the Belfont Area School Board. All candidates for the Belfont School Board race have been invited to participate in a CNET interview. Election day is Tuesday, November 7th. For more information about voting in Center County, please visit centercountyvotes.gov. I'm Haley Kynes. Thanks for watching and please get out and vote.